Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. Today we're doing C++ and we're gonna do a single core test and a multi-core test. And what are we testing? Apple Silicon versus Apple Silicon versus Apple Silicon. Three machines here, a MacBook Air M1, a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Pro chip and a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip. I've got two tests here and you might've seen these on my channel before when I was doing some comparisons. The first one is a quick sort algorithm implemented in C++. Pretty simple stuff here it is i'm going to basically generate an array of what is that one million items stuff them into the array and then sort them using quick sort self-explanatory now what's interesting about this is that it uses one core only so this is going to be our single core test and after that, we'll do a multi-core test, which is a different program. So let's begin. I've got Quicksort on the terminal here in all three machines. I'm going to build it first. G++ dash O, and then main is the output, and main.cpp is the input file. Let's go and build that. Okay, so now we've got main, that's the executable that we're gonna run. And I'll do the same thing on these two machines. Uh, let's take a look at that file for a second. This is supposed to be an ARM executable because I built it on the machine using the ARM architecture. So these are all ARM architectures. And you can see that right here. If I say file main, you'll see that it is built for ARM64 and it's executable. So how am I going to run this? I'm going to say time and then I'm going to say main. This will go ahead and run the program. It's not going to take very long. And then I'm going to pipe the output to out.txt so that we're not introducing any side effects. All right, I'll do the same thing on all these machines. We're all set up here. All right, so we're going to run this all together now, but I don't have three hands. We like to do races on this channel, don't we? But it's hard to do with three machines because I just can't reach three enter keys. Hold on just a minute. This should do. Well, let's see if this will give me three fingers. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> we need a name for this thing. If you have a name suggestion for what this is, put it in the comments, please. We don't even know if it's gonna work yet. So let's, uh, let's see. Now, my prediction before we run this test is that because these are all the same kind of CPU cores, yes, the new machines have the same kind of CPU cores that the M1s did. And since this is a single core test, then all these machines should result in the same speed for this test. Okay, this is all set up now. <laughs> let's try this out. Just gotta line it up perfectly on the enter keys and let's go. I think that worked. Okay, now we just gotta wait for the results. <laughs> okay, well, I have no idea who finished first and my prediction was sort of correct. I mean, they do have slightly different times, but for the most part, we're at 15.77 seconds on the MacBook Air, 15.53 on the M1 Pro and 15.602 on the M1 Max. By the way, some people are not used to me reading the numbers. Sometimes I say 15.53, I really mean 15.53, okay? Let's do this again a couple of times just so that we get an average. We gotta get used to using this thing. It's not that easy. I'll have to perfect this thing, whatever it's called. Okay, 15.6, 15.4, 15.5. So we're in the same range and I'm gonna run it just one more time. Why the heck not? Okay, folks, we're getting pretty consistent numbers here. Let's move on to the next test, which is the multi-core test. Now, if you watched this channel before, you've probably seen me do this, and it's Benchmarks Game, which is a website I often use to do benchmarks of different languages and different code stacks. In this case, it's Mandelbrot, if you haven't watched my video on doing the Mandelbrot test, uh, go back in the library. I'll link to it down below too. Here we're going to do Mandelbrot and this is going to be C++. Basically, this is an algorithm that utilizes all the cores. So here's an example of the CPU load. We're going to be maxing out all the available cores and this is the code for it. It also tells you the instructions on how to run the code at the bottom of every page. Pretty handy. Now, I got to say a couple of things here. I'm expecting the M1 MacBook Air to lose this one because it's an eight core machine. These two are both 10 core machines. So I'm expecting these two machines to have the same result in this test and the MacBook Air to have a longer time. Let's see if my prediction is correct. I'm going to build this program, the C++ program on all three machines. Now I did change something about this test. And I just wanted you to be aware of that. I did change this flag here. So in the instructions, this is built for uh, Intel machine. 
Ivy Bridge and you specify the architecture to be Ivy Bridge to be able to enable some of the flags that optimize for the Intel machine. By the way, I have a whole video on this. I'll link to it down below on the differences between optimizations for different types of processors. So I changed that here on the command line to MCPU generic so that it can build on the Apple machines. Okay, I've built all this. Now we're gonna run it. And the way I'm gonna run this is I'm gonna time the Mandelbrot executable and I'm gonna provide the parameter, which is 16,000. You can vary this parameter to get a uh, different length of tests, but the one they suggest and the one they use in their benchmarks is 16,000. And I'm gonna pipe the output to TXT, which they don't do in their example, but that ends up printing a whole bunch of Mendelbrosian garbage. It's actually fractals, ASCII characters, but nobody cares because all it does is just do a bunch of beeps and print a bunch of gobbledygook to the screen. But we want to remove that factor in this particular test because all I want to do is just see how long the process takes. So here we go <laughs> and go. Oh, that was fast. Folks, that was so fast, I'm gonna have to increase the parameter. But let's go over it real quick here. 1.2 seconds on the M1 MacBook Air. And these two are so close that I'm gonna have to run this for a longer period. And uh, this one was 0.8 and 0.7. So let's change the parameter here. I'm gonna set this to 160,000 instead of 16,000. It should take a little bit longer. And let's go. That was clean. I pressed those at the same time and pretty cleanly. I gotta say, this might work. Now, while it's running, let's take a look at the activity monitor here. And you can see that it's taken up 993% of the CPU here on this M1 Pro. So it is, in fact, a multi-core test. I'm not sure how long this is going to take, so I don't want to miss the moment. By the way, the temperatures of these machines are at 95 and 100, and the fans are spinning at about 1500 RPM on both of these machines, yet I don't hear anything. That's great. I'm using TG Pro to tell me the temperature and the fan speed, by the way. Link down below if you want to try it out. And these two machines are done, folks. MacBook Air, still working on it. Still crunching those numbers. Let's see how long that one finishes. And okay, and it's done. That took significantly longer on the MacBook Air M1 at 1 minute and 59 seconds. And this one, M1 Pro, took 1 minute and 8 seconds. And the M1 Max, 1 minute and 7 seconds. Now, I do have to wonder that difference. Is it because of the memory bandwidth or what's going on here? So I'm going to run this a couple more times just to get an average. All right. Now, the second time around, I'm hearing a little bit more noise from the M1 Max. And the fans are spinning up to over 2000 RPM over there both at 64 degrees Celsius. These two are done. We're waiting for the M1, but the times on these two are pretty consistent with the previous run at 107 and 107. I think my prediction was actually right. This multi-core process is actually taking the same amount of time to run on both these machines, whether you have the Pro or you have the Max. And we're finally done on the M1 MacBook Air. It's a little bit slower at two minutes and five seconds. Just to get an average, I'm gonna do this yet one more time you can even see the program actually reports how much of the CPU uh, it's used. And this one says 946. That one says 950, telling us that it is using all the processors while running this program. Now, of course, it only says 766 on the M1 because that one only has eight cores. Now, what is interesting here is that, and take this with a grain of salt because I'm not actually sure what's going on under the hood. What's going on with the processors oh, splitting up the tasks and all that. I don't know how the optimizations work, but it seems to me like if we have a 20% decrease in the number of processors going from uh, one of these M1 Pro machines and an M1 Max machines with 10 cores going down to an eight core machine, yet we have more than double or about double the amount of time that it takes, not a 20% decrease, but a significant decrease in performance for that multi-core test on the M1. Not sure what's going on with that, even though they all were equivalent in the single core test, in the multi-core test, the M1 is doing a lot worse. So we've got our results, 209 on the M1. It is getting worse and worse with every run. The temperature is at 68 degrees, so it's not really throttling that much, but yet the time is increasing on that one. 107 and 107 on these two machines, very consistent on these two. Folks, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up if it was helpful or informative or entertaining. <laughs> and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. I'll see you next time.